colleagues and uh, participants, welcome uh, to the session titled Untold Tales of Women Champions in Climate Change, uh, which is jointly organized by International Center for Climate Change and Development and UN Women. Um, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC, UNFCCC that we, is usually we call, the Climate Change Treaty signed by 197 states and nations came into force on 21 March 1994. So after 20 years of its existence at COP20 in 2014, the Lima Work Program on Gender was adopted to advance gender balance and integrate gender considerations into climate change policies and actions. And finally at COP25, <clears throat> two years ago, well, uh, less than two years ago in uh, December, 2019, um, parties agreed a five-year enhanced Lima work program on gender and its gender action plan. Now, UNFCCC has been publishing gender composition report annually since 2013 to support parties to track progress on gender balance to promote a gender sensitive climate policy. The 2019 report showed that five out of 15 constituted bodies of UNFCCC had female representation exceeding 38% while in 2018, it was eight out of 13 constituted, constituted bodies reaching that threshold. In 2020, the ratio has come down further to 35%. So there's been a regression in female representation on constituted bodies that formulate climate change policies in UNFCCC. And the Clean Development Mechanism executive board had the lowest number in 2019, only 10% female representation. So again, such an odd circumstances uh, with regards to gender integration at international policymaking level, at the ground level, we have seen, we have been seeing over the years how women have been working and achieving wonderful feats in climate change field. Um, we will hear some of them uh, today, be it Lipikarani Boiragi from Association for Social Development and Distressed Welfare at Dako Kulna, or Dr. Maureen Fordham from University College London, or Saima Wazid Putul from Shuchona in Dhaka. So there, there are so many stories of uh, courage, strength, sacrifice, and dedication of innumerable women that have made differences to the lives of so many women and their communities to survive disaster and climatic shocks. We need to acknowledge, we need to learn from, and we need to celebrate those stories to go forward in our journey towards a gender equal playing field in climate change policies and actions, which would then benefit women and men and gender diverse people equally. At this event, we plan to do exactly that. So at this stage, I would like to invite Dr. Salimul Haq, the founding director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development at the Independent University, Bangladesh, for his welcome remarks. Dr. Hawk, a veteran climate change expert, respected globally, is a senior fellow in the climate change group at the International Institute for Environment and Development, he has been involved in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change for long as a lead author, and he's a lead author of the chapter on adaptation and sustainable development in the third assessment report of IPCC. He has innumerable publications on climate change adaptation, and Dr. Hawk was awarded the Bertoni Award in 2007 for his work on climate change adaptation. And so um, we are really honored that we are uh, co-hosting this event with ICAD and have Dr. Hawk to give the re welcoming remarks. Dr. Hawk, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dilruba. Good evening, Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, first, let me thank you for, uh, and you and women for offering to run this session in the Gaveshina Conference. 
I'm going to share a little bit about the history of the Gobeshna Conference. And for the benefit of those who don't know what the word Gobeshna means, it's a Bangla word for research. And it is the, uh, the word we chose to name a network or platform of research and universities doing work on climate change seven years ago here in Bangladesh. It now has more than 50 partner organizations, universities, research institutes, uh, international agencies like the UN as well. And among the many things that we do, which I won't describe, we hold, uh, we have been holding an annual conference every January, uh, bringing together the researchers and to look for research into action, not just research for research sake, but research that can be used by policymakers, by practitioners, by people on the ground. And in the past six years, we had it as a physical conference at my university, the Independent University Bangladesh. We had about 400 people over four days meeting and discussing. This year, we have gone virtual because of the uh, pandemic, but by virtue of it being virtual, we have also increased our ambition to make it a global conference on locally led adaptation. And we reached out to partners around the world and the response we got was tremendous. So we have ended up with 90 sessions over seven days, running them 24 hours a day. Today is the sixth, we're just coming to the end of the sixth day. Uh, and we have one more day to go tomorrow. And in this period, we have had uh, sessions from all over the world. We start in eight hour segments for Asia Pacific and then another eight hours for Africa and Europe and then another eight hours for the Americas. And we've done this circling the world 24 hours, six days already, and uh, we have one more day to go. Now, on the issue of women in particular, last year in the Gobeshna Conference, my colleague Shaila, uh, who was with us at that time, she organized a session where we had some very uh, prominent uh, leaders, uh, women leaders in the climate change arena, and in other arenas as well, but also looking at climate change. And we uh, uh, brought people together thinking that we should take this forward. And I'm very happy to see that Dilruba has uh, taken this forward this year and uh, UN Women is doing this. Uh, one other thing that I will mention before I close is that uh, one of our partners, Action Aid, Farah Kabir at Action Aid, has also taken this issue forward. And they have in fact done a a sort of competition of uh, grassroots level women leaders doing adaptation. And tomorrow in the closing session, tomorrow evening, 7 to 9 p.m. Dhaka time, uh, Farah will be uh, issuing the winners of that particular competition, women grassroots adaptation leader competition. So it's very good to see these issues now moving forward. And uh, uh, I hope that you will continue these discussions. And from our side, from ICAT side, Although we've lost Shaila, we will continue to be uh, your, your supporters and champions. So thank you very much, Dilruba. Thank you so much, Selim Bhai. That's uh, very encouraging to know that um, we will get ICAD on our side uh, to continue this uh, journey of, um, uh, of, of uh, the work of, towards uh, gender mainstreaming uh, of uh, climate. Um, gender, gender mainstreaming climate change actions. Um, today we will actually have several of our uh, women champions from uh, grassroots um, grassroot level uh, present their story uh, via video. Uh, they are actually online, um, but um, because of, um, you know, just to make sure that uh, we are not uh, interrupted by um, any connectivity problem, we have managed to get video uh, message, um, their speech on, on video uh, that we will be playing, but they are very much online. And uh, at this stage, I would like to uh, introduce them to you. Um, they will um, introduce themselves one by one, and then we will go to their stories. So may I request, um, uh, I think we have, okay. uh, no, uh, Sharin, can you hold on, hold, hold on to that for a while? Yeah, 
Okay, uh, not yet. I just want to introduce our panelists um, or our champions rather, uh, the women champions from the field first, and then we will uh, play their stories. So, um, yeah, okay. So uh, may I request uh, uh, one by one our uh, female champions from, from the field, just to introduce yourself. Jannat, you are there. If you can just- uh, I'm here, thank you so much. Yeah, if you can just introduce yourself and your organization. Hi, Kushiapa, Diluvapa, thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Jannatul Mawa. I am a Bindu Nari Unnan Shangathan. We are working on uh, two like uh, women rights and climate justice that Thank really you. relevant of our national activities. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Jannat. Um, next, may I request um, uh, Afroza Begum Alpona um, from Kurigram. Wa alaikum assalam. Afroja Begum Alpona, Kuigram Shadow Upujila Mohila Vice Chairman, plus Ami Disaster Committee Shadusha, Kuigram Shadow Upujila. Right. Okay, for my our non speak Bangla speaking participants, she is from Kuigram Upazila and she is Vice Chair of the Union Purishad. Her name is Afroza Begum Alpona. Uh, and she's also a member of Disaster Management <coughs> Committee there. Uh, Kushiapa, uh, you are not in the field, but you are our respected panelists. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you very much. I'm Kushi Kabir from Nijarakuri. Uh, yes, in a way I'm not in the field because I'm based in Dhaka, but the work right now, I yeah. do and everything I do is in the field and yes. I've grown up from the field. So my all my experiences is in, is from the field, both present and past. So thank you very much. Thank you, Appa. Uh, Lipika Rani Boiragi. No. Yeah. No. Uh, Lipika Rani Boiragi, Amarna. Uh, Amar Shangotinna ASGDW Association for Social Development and Distressed Welfare. Ami etar executive director. Pasha pashi ami Mohila College er ekjon teacher. Arakta purche holo ami Bangladesh Mohila amli ke dakupupu jilar shadaran shampadu. Bang Janunetti manoni apudan mantri khudru ekjon korni etar. Dono bad. Thank you so much. Uh, Lipika, she is the executive director, Lipika Rani Boiragi. She is the executive director of Association for Social Development. Uh, and she's from Dakop Upazila of Khulna. Uh, and she's uh, also a um, member of uh, the ruling Awami League Party. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to make sure that you are over there in the in, online. We are just asking your name and the organization. Okay. Um, okay next, um, can I request Jahida Jahan Mo to introduce yourself? আমি হচ্ছে প্রথম হলো বন্ধু সবার সভাপতি ছিলাম দুই বছর সাধারণ সম্পাদক ছিলাম এবং দুই বছর সভাপতি ছিলাম বর্তমানে প্রথম হলো বন্ধু সভা সাক্ষীর উপদেষ্টা হিসেবে আছি এবং আমি সাক্ষাতে অনেকগুলো স্বেচ্ছাসেবী সংগঠনের নেতৃত্বে ধন্যবাদ थैंक यू सो मच ফরিদা ইয়াসমিন হ্যালো আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওয়া আলাইকুম আসসালাম uh, this is Purida Yasmin, Executive Director of NARI Associate for Revival and Initiative, in short name NARI. Uh, are... I am a I am a NARI. 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 I am a 
uh, our organization name is Nari, uh, and we are from Ulipur Pujala under Kurigram district. Uh, we are working from women empowerment to uh, uh, various uh, training, uh, job employment, and uh, disaster response. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in Pori, I think, um... Maureen uh, will be speaking next, but I am not going to Maureen at this stage. Um, and uh, we will come to the panelists later because you will get to talk, uh, the uh, panelists who are here in Dhaka, you will be talking yourself, but the uh, panelists who are there in the grassroots level, uh, they will primarily, we will show their videos. That's why I wanted to uh, hear their, uh, let them speak a bit at the beginning. So uh, our first uh, panelist, <clears throat> uh, our first panelist today um, is, uh, who will be narrating her story, is Ms. Jannatul Mawa, Executive Director of Bindu Nari Unnan Shangathan from Kaligon Jupazila of Shatkira. So um, Sharin, if you could show the video of Jannat. Okay, I can't see the screen now, Sharin. Nidhi, is there any issue? If there is any particular pro problem with Jannat's story, we, we could go to other story as well. If um, sorry, I think I think he's trying to reconnect again. Sorry, apologies. Please bear with us for a minute. Oh, okay, so he has got disconnected. Okay, right. Um, Okay. All right. আমার নাম জান্নাতুল মাওয়া আমি নির্বাহী পরিচালক বিন্দু নারী উন্নয়ন সংগঠন পাঁচ ভাই তিন বোনে সবার ছোট পরিবারে আজকে যে সংগঠনটা সেটা আসলে একটা গ্রুপ ছিল আমরা তখন স্কুলে পড়তাম আর কি তো আমাদের মূল কাজটা ছিল পলিথিন কোড়ানো এবং কিছু স্লোগান ছিল আমাদের সেই স্লোগানগুলো বলা পোস্টারগুলো দেয়ালে দেওয়ালে মারা এবং এর সাথে বাল্য বিবাহ রোধ নিয়ে আমরা স্কুল পর্যায়ে কিছু কাজ করতাম আর কি এইসএসি পাস করার পরে এখানে একটা লোকাল কমিউনিটি রেডিও হলো যেটা হচ্ছে একেবারে ভলেন্টিয়ার তারা চেয়েছিল ওখানে আমি লোকাল কমিউনিটি রেডিওতে একেবারে ভলেন্টিয়ার হিসাবে যোগদান করি এর পাশাপাশি অধিকার নামক একটা সংগঠন যেটা বাংলাদেশের অন্যতম একটা মানবাধিকার সংগঠন তো ওই অধিকারের সাথেও আমি ভলেন্টিয়ার হিসাবে যুক্ত হই দু সালে আমার কাজের ওপরে নির্ভর করে বাংলাদেশ থেকে চারজন নারী ব্রডকাস্টারকে বের করা হলো যাদেরকে আসলে আরও উন্নত কিভাবে রেডিও কমিউনিটি রেডিও পরিচালনা করে সেই জন্য দিল্লিতে দিল্লি ইন্দিরা গান্ধী ওপেন ইউনিভার্সিটিতে একটা কোর্স করা হবে সাতক্ষীরার এই মফরসালে ওইটা আমার জীবনের একটা টার্নিং একটা পয়েন্ট ছিল তখন আসলে ভাবনা জায়গাটা একদম পরিবর্তন এবং পরিষ্কার হয়ে গেল যে না আসলে মফসল শহর ন্যাশনাল বা গ্লোবালি বলে কোনো বিষয় নেই কেউ যদি কাজ করতে চায় সে আসলে সেটা সম্ভব আমাদের আসলে এই মফসলগুলোতে নারী সাংবাদিকের পরিমাণ খুবই কম ছিল এর পরপরে ওরা আমাকে আরেকটা লার্নিংয়ের জন্য ফিনল্যান্ড পাঠালো ইউরোপের দেশ আমার জীবনের এটা একটা মানে কি বলে মানে না চাইতে একটা এত বড় ব্যাপার কারণ আসলে ইউরোপে যাওয়ার মতো আমি যে পরিবার থেকে বিলং করি বা বেড়ে উঠেছি সেটা আসলে বোধ হয় আমার সারাটা জীবনেও সম্ভব কি না সেটাও এখন মনে হয় আর কি নারীর প্রতি সকল প্রকার সহিংসতার বিরুদ্ধে আমরা সোচ্চার 
আর আমাদের দ্বিতীয় কাজ হচ্ছে আমরা জলবায়ুর ন্যায্যতার দাবিতে সোচ্চার দুটো জিনিস আমরা খুবই গুরুত্ব দিয়ে দেখি কারণ জলবায়ু পরিবর্তনের ফলে আসলে যে ক্ষয়ক্ষতি হয় সেখানে কিন্তু যে আমরা ভার্নালেবল কমিউনিটি বলি যে ঝুঁকিপূর্ণ কমিউনিটি সেটা কিন্তু নারী শিশু এবং প্রতিবন্ধী এই তিনটা আমাদের সংগঠনে যারা আছেন সবারই বয়স কিন্তু পঁয়ত্রিশের কম এবং এক ঝাঁক তরুণ নারী এরকম একটা নেতৃত্ব দিচ্ছে সেটা কিন্তু একটা আমি মনে করি এই কমিউনিটির জন্য ব্যাপার পুরো সাতক্ষীরা জেলায় আপনি এরকম দেখতে পারবেন না তো ছোটোবেলায় যেগুলো প্রভাব পড়তো বাড়িতে তো দেখেছি বাবা এবং মায়ের মধ্যে একটা চরম সহিংসতা জায়গা এবং আমি না আমার গ্রুপের আমরা সবাই একই রকম বিষয়ের মধ্য দিয়ে বেড়ে উঠেছে এবং ভেতরকার এক ধরনের নাড়া কিন্তু সে ছোটোবেলা থেকেই দিত যে কেন কেন নারীকে কেন নারীকে মারা কেন নারীকে দমিয়ে রাখা কেন নারীকে কথা না বলা পরিবার থেকে বলেছিল যে কালীগঞ্জ উপজেলা আমি একজনই বিএসসি পরীক্ষা দিয়েছিলাম আর কি তো বলছিল যে বিএসসি পাশ করলে স্কুলের টিচার হওয়া যাবে হ তুমি তো পাশ করলেই স্কুলের টিচার হওয়া তো আর এত পড়াশুনো করা তো মানে বাইরে যাওয়াটা ওর কোনো দরকার নেই জান্নাত মেয়ে এটা হচ্ছে ওর দ্বারা হবে না বা এই জান্নাতের এটা সহজ হবে মেয়ে মানুষ এই কথাটা আমি আসলে কোনো দিন হজম করতে পারিনি আমি এমন একটা স্পেস তৈরি করব যে স্পেসটা হচ্ছে শুধুমাত্র নারী না থাকবে নারীদের নেতৃত্বে জায়গা থাকবে এবং নারীরা ডিসিশন মেকিংয়ে জায়গা থাকবে আমার কথা যখন দশটা মানুষ শোনে সোসাইটির নীতি নির্ধারক পর্যায়ে তারা যখন গুরুত্ব দেয় তখন তো পরিবার বুঝতে পারে যে আসলে না তার মধ্যে আসলে কিছু কোয়ালিটি তৈরি হচ্ছে তো সেটা আমার আসলে ভাঙতে হচ্ছে পরিবার আসলে পরিবার না কেউই একদিনই প্রস্তুত থাকে না আসলে প্রস্তুত করে নিতে হয় একটা কথায় মাথায় রাখতে হবে যে আমি নারী না আমি মানুষ এবং মানুষ হিসেবে ভাবতে হবে যে এটা যখন সমাজের অনেকেই পারে আমার পক্ষেও সম্ভব Thank you so much. Uh, that was the story of Jannat, uh, a very spirited girl, actually. I remember last year uh, in the sixth Gobeshna conference, uh, we, ha we have been, even women has been working with her organization for the last two years, developing capacity of her organization on climate change, disaster risk reduction. So uh, in the last year's Gobeshna conference, she came to join in uh, another uh, women's uh, leadership session. And uh, she walked up to me um, to saying that, Appa, can I get one minute to share my experience? Um, I couldn't help her because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't the panel, I wasn't uh, the uh, moderator. But then when she saw that I couldn't help her, she walked straight up to the uh, moderator and requested her point blank that, you know, I have come from Shatke, all the way from Shatkira to share my story. And that's, that's Jannat, full of spirit and in, indomitable uh, and full of strength and courage. So it's wonderful to hear you, Jannat. Uh, our next champion uh, whose story we will hear is Afruza Begum Alpuna, the Vice Chairman of Union Purishad and Member of Disaster Management Committee from Kurigram. Sharian, Sharin, আমি আফ্রুজা বেগম আলপনা কুড়িগ্রাম সদর উপজেলার মহিলা ভাইস চেয়ারম্যান সে সাথে ভারপ্রাপ্ত চেয়ারম্যান ছিলাম দু হাজার থেকে সাবেক পৌর কমিশনার এবং প্যানেল মেয়র ছিলাম ক্লাস থ্রিতে যখন পড়তাম তখন রেড ক্রিসেন্টে আমি সদস্য হলাম এবং পাশাপাশি এখান থেকেই আমাদের অনেক কিছু উদ্বেগ ছিল যে আমরা আসলে সমাজের জন্য কি কি কাজ করব যেহেতু আমাদেরকে কিছু ট্রেনিং করানো হতো তো চিন্তা করছিলাম যে আসলে যারা সমাজের একেবারেই নিচু লেভেলের মানুষ এবং হত দরিদ্র যা যাদের কাছে আসলে কেউ সহজে পৌঁছাইতে চায় না আমরা আসলে চিন্তা করছিলাম যে আমি সে জায়গাতেই পৌঁছাবো এবং সে কাজগুলোই করব এবং আমি সে কাজগুলোই করতেছি যখন আস্তে আস্তে বড় হলাম কিছু প্রশিক্ষণ পেলাম কাজের সঙ্গে সম্পৃক্ত থাকলাম বললাম যেরকম বললাম যে আমরা জেলা রেড ক্রিসেন্ট থেকেই শুরু করে ফায়ার সার্ভিস পর্যন্ত এমন কোনো জায়গা নেই যেখানে আমি ট্রেনিং করিনি প্রশিক্ষণ করিনি তার একটা আমার হবি ছিল যে একটা সার্টিফিকেট পাবো যেখানেই যাই না কেন দুই কথা বলবো বা আমি যেটা জানি না জানার মতো করে একটা প্রশ্ন করতে পারবো আমার নয়টা ইউনিয়নে একাশিটা ওয়ার্ড আছে নদীর এই পাড়ো পাড় আছে মানে বালুবাড়ি চরবাড়ি আছে কিন্তু সেখানে দেখা গেছে যে খোলা মাঠে একটা মার্ডার হয়েছে সেখানে একজন চেয়ারম্যান ভাইস চেয়ারম্যান কিংবা পুরুষ কমিশনারের প্রয়োজন দেখা যায় যে মাঠ একদম খালি কেউ যাচ্ছে না 
পুলিশ গিয়ে সেখানে হয়তো সেরকম কোনো লোকজন পাচ্ছে না দেখা যাচ্ছে যত রাতেই হোক না কেন বারোটা একটা দুইটা তিনটা যখনই হোক আমার কি স্মরণ করবে এবং সেই মুহূর্তেই হয়তো আমি সেখানে গিয়ে হচ্ছে উপস্থিত হলেই কাজটা হয়তো সেভাবেই সমাধান করি নারী হিসেবে আসলে আমরা কাজ করতে গেলে আমরা যেহেতু পুরুষতান্ত্রিক সমাজের মধ্যে এখনও আছি শিকার তবুও আসলে আমাদের সমাজ ব্যবস্থার কারণেই আমরা আসলে নারীদের যে পথ চলার কারণেই যে বান্ধাধান সময়ে বা পুরানো সময়ে বয়স্ক যারা ছিলেন তাদেরও এখনও কিছু প্রভাব আছে যে কাজ করতে গেলে আমাদেরকে নানান ধরনের কথা শুনতে হয় ঘর থেকে বের হওয়ানো বিশেষ করে বারো থেকে চোদ্দো ষোলো বছরের মেয়েদের তো প্রশ্নেই আসে না এখানে তো নানান ধরনের অজুহাত থাকে এখনও আমাদের বাংলাদেশে চল আসে বাল্য বিয়ে ওটা বিয়ে দেওয়ার কারণেই আসলে আমাদের এই সমস্যাগুলো ফেস করতে হয় সমাজে কাজ করতে গিয়ে যে বাধাগ্রস্ত হয়েছে এবং যে সুযোগগুলো পায়নি এখন সেদিক থেকেই বলবো যে আমাদের প্রশাসনিক কিছু সমস্যা আছে সামাজিক কিছু কুসংস্কার আছে এখনও আমাদের পদ্মা প্রথা রয়েই গেছে সেক্ষেত্রে যে এই বিষয়গুলোর সঙ্গে সরকার যে বিভিন্ন পদক্ষেপ নিচ্ছে না তা নয় কিন্তু বিশেষ করে আমাদের সামাজিক বিষয়টা এই সামাজিক বিষয়টার যে একটা ঘুণে ধরা সমাজ এই সমাজটাকে আমাদের আসলেই পরিবর্তন করতে হবে এটা করতে গেলে আমাদের নিজেদের পরিবর্তন আগে করতে হবে ফ্যামিলি থেকে আসলে এখনও ওইভাবে আমি সাপোর্ট পাই না কারণ কাজ করতে করতে অনেক রাত হয়ে যায় ফ্যামিলি চাচ্ছে না যে আমি এই জায়গাতে ইনভলভ হই কারণ আমার ফ্যামিলির একটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড আছে আমি এটা মেনে নিয়েছি যে ঠিক আছে বাইরের লোক তো অবশ্যই খারাপ বলবে কিন্তু বাইরের লোক বলবে না এই কারণেই বলবে না তারাই আমাকে সাপোর্ট দিচ্ছে কারণ আমি তাদের কাজ করতে পারতেছি যতই বাধা বিপত্তি আসুক না কেন সেক্ষেত্রেই তারা আমাকে সাপোর্ট দিচ্ছে তো এই কারণেই আমি মনে করি যে বাড়ির বাধাটাকে আমি উপেক্ষা করলেও বাইরে যে সাপোর্টটা পাচ্ছি এতে করে আমার বাড়ির লোকজন এখন মোটামুটিভাবে সন্তুষ্ট ও নেক্সট আমি এমপি হবে ফাইটগুলো দিতে গেলে যে বিষয়গুলো জানতে হয় সেটা ওর মধ্যে আসে হ্যাঁ আমি একটা ভোটে দাঁড়াইছিলাম হচ্ছে স্কুল ক্যাপ্টেন আমি ছোটতে বলছিলাম পুলিশ হবো যখন দেখলাম জিতলাম তখন ভাবলাম এমপি হব আলফনা ফুপির মতোই হইতে চাই Thank you, Afroza. That's a wonderful story of your leadership and the way that you have, you know, overcome the hurdles that uh, was put to your, on your path from your family, from your community. And now you are here, the vice chair of the Union Borishan. It's great to hear your story. Uh, now we, our next champion is Kushi Kubir, um, a front runner women's movement leader of Bangladesh who worked in rural areas of Bangladesh with marginalized communities for more than 40 years. And she's a member of the Chittagong Hill Tracks Commission. She coordinated the 1 billion rising in 2013 in Bangladesh. And Kushiapa has been speaking up and realizing the rights of landless over the last 25 years. And uh, she was awarded <clears throat> the Lifetime Achievement Awards at the 14th Biennial of the Regional Conference of the Zontal District 25 in 2015. Um, in fact, during my early days in development work, I used to look up to her with awe. The way she talked, the way she made her points invincible points, the way she defended the causes of women's rights, uh, she actually commanded respect of all her friends and foes alike. So I'm really glad that uh, Kushiapa is here today to share her stories with us. Kushiapa, over to you. Thank you so much, Dilruba. And for those lovely words, I almost uh, could recognize myself when you were describing me. But uh, thank you again. Uh, you know, after listening to those two such inspirational stories, it becomes uh, very difficult for me to meet with what they've done. They've done amazing work. And I know we don't have much time and uh, I'll try and speak as uh, to the point so that I can uh, uh, say it within this time slot available to me. So I want to thank uh, all of y'all who have invited me and who've asked me to speak. And, have, and I feel honored that you've considered me as one of the grassroots voices, because that's how I would like to really, uh, you know, uh, describe myself as. 
because that is what I always wish to do is raise the grassroots voices. And that's where my learning come from, comes from. Everything I've learned is not just through books or through listening to reading papers or listening to papers or researching, you know, secondhand researching. I'm not a first-hand researcher, but basically uh, having had the opportunity to go to many different uh, international, globally recognized universities and speaking, I like to bring in the voice of my experiences at the grassroots. I started immediately after the liberation war of Bangladesh. I think 1971, for those of us of my age, left a lasting impact. It was the most turning point in our lives. And I graduated as an art student, but I went to work in the villages for rehabilitation and development of people. And so I went into the most remote areas, the Haurs of Shunam Ganj, to live there and work. And I lived, I think, about four years at a stretch in one, in one of those areas, in those villages. Later on, I went to live in other villages, so uh, in different parts of the country. So when we talk about climate change, I think a lot of issues that are being raised is something when I talk to people in the village and I move in the village, what is climate change, you know? So it's changes in the nature and the pattern. And it's not something that just happens. It happens because the, you know, the, you know, the definition we've given of development is a definition that has been given from the outside top down. And it's a definition that doesn't look at how nature and humans have lived for millennia together, millennia together, and how they've lived in a way that at least the earth continues to function and flourish for generations to come. But in our greed to try and develop, we have impacted and the earth is a whole. So whatever may be done in say, just for instance, in the US of America, impacts Bangladesh too, because we are part of the total system. And uh, I learned that also firsthand of how this impact can be done, but that can happen. So it's not just what people commonly think that the sea level rises. And as soon as the sea level rises, the, uh, we'll be all in, uh, engulfed and inundated with water. And then uh, Bangladesh people will have nowhere to stay. It's, you know, how the rivers have changed, how our Agriculture patterns have changed, which have changed our, um, you know, the kind of soil we've had, the fertility, the fertility in the rivers and the kind of the rich marine and uh, aqua culture we had, aqua fisheries that we had, not culture, aqua fisheries that we had. All that is being impacted, the forests, everything. So being with people in the villages, there are a few things I just want to uh, bring out. Uh, of, that I've learned. I've learned that the hours I lived with, lived in in the early 70s have changed. And in the name of development, the embankments and the roads that have been created have been good. But if the planning is not taken into consideration where the water flows through, how does the water flow? Because the hours need water. The hours are uh, uh, low-lying areas that are uh, inundated for most of the uh, for six to eight months of the year uh, uh, underwater. And the other five, six months, they grow extremely rich, abundant rice crops. So now once we start making embankments, it's affecting the total livelihoods of people, and especially the women, the women's roles, the women's everything. When we look at the transferring of productive agriculture land to non-productive uh, systems of uh, giving it to uh, housing estates or giving it for uh, industries, et cetera. Again, we're changing the whole systems of people's uh, relationship with, with nature. And so I would also say like in one of the areas which the Luba knows very well is in these one of the areas I work in, the entire land was taken over for export oriented shrimp aquaculture and how we destroyed the salinity destroyed the entire because you needed saline water for this particular type of shrimp. It destroyed the whole agriculture systems. Now the people of the area taught me what local resistance meant 
the people in the area taught me what it meant to actually fight back, be resilient and resist and really take back their, their environment. So while we talk about climate change, we also have to take the whole picture and the people and the women, because the women are the ones who are the caregivers, definitely. They are the ones who have to ensure there's food on the table for the people. They have the ones who have to ensure that the vegetables they grow are being fed to their family. They have, they're the ones who have to ensure the health and the care and well-being of the family. So they have to look at how can they do it. And we have seen, like in many of the areas in Kulna that I work in, that the women have taken back sh huge shrimp farms from these shrimp lords and gone back to agriculture. It took them eight years or nine years for it to go back to its old situation and condition. And I asked them that, you know, how did you manage for these eight, nine years when things were not moving? Uh, you know, you weren't growing enough. And they said, but we weren't growing anything. We were thrown out of our lands. We had to move through the cities and we are rickshaw lives in the men. And if it's women, then we have to work. So they said, since we had lost everything, we are willing to wait nine years or 10 years if we get the land back to where, what it was. And they have the picture. I wish I could show you pictures. It's astounding of seeing what this huge barren land of just water with no trees, nothing. And now it's lush and green because that's what they've started doing. So it's really amazing how women are resilient in every way, how they are willing to fight back with their lives if necessary, to say that this is what development should be. Development cannot be without us. Development cannot be only having, making income and having money so that our GNP and GDP increases. It means taking us along and it means that us having food on our table, us having healthcare, us having uh, what we need and our children being able to go to school. Even everything like women's security, everything is all interrelated. And they have taught me what interrelationship is. And I think, you know, I was very impressed listening to uh, the first speaker, uh, Janna Mawa, because Mawa, when she spoke about how she started from school, I'm seeing kids in the school now forming their own groups in trying to do kitchen gardening, because after the COVID pandemic, they, and there was no market to go to, they started growing. So I have so much faith in this new generation. And I have so much faith in the people, men too. I won't say that the men have not worked, but I, I'm stressing on women because it's women who have to feed. We've seen during the pandemic that the men had no work. So the violence against women increased, that the women had to face, feed, feed the family and they had to find means. So I would like to say that when we do plans, and here I'm not talking as a grassroots activist, but somebody who's with the grassroots, talking to people who are planning at the top level, that when we draw plans, please keep in mind the wisdom, the experiences, and the centuries old traditional knowledge that exists with our women. I mean, they are the real uh, champions of our uh, you know, systems and we have to honor them and we have to respect them. And thank you for including me with them. Thank you so much, Kushi Appa. Uh, those are really, really inspiring words. Um, uh, we, we got to hear a bit about your story, uh, but you, as usual, focused a lot on the substance of the, of the issue. Uh, but really, we missed hearing a little more of your story, but uh, we will have that some other time. <laughs> um, I'm a bit shy of always putting, <laughs> talking about myself. I'd rather talk about the work, right? Thank I you. know, but sometimes, Appa, we just have to tell our stories for the world to know uh, how we have come here so that they really realize and, uh, you know, appreciate. Um, and, okay, so um, our next climate champion is Lipika Rani Boiragi. Uh, she already introduced herself that she is the executive director of uh, an NGO called ASWDDW in Dako. Um, and 
we'll hear from her. But I just wanted to um, tell you that uh, we have been working with her organization again for the last um, a little more than two years now, developing their capacity on uh, climate change and DRR. Um, but I met her in person um, in last November uh, in a workshop in Kulna. And uh, during the uh, tea break, I went up to her to just to uh, have a quick chit chat with her about, you know, what are the kinds of work she's doing and things like that and how she's faring during the pandemic and all that. But within that five minutes that I had conversation with her, I really got smitten by her simplicity and extraordinary dedication to her work to change the lot of her community. She initiated two adaptation projects with her own little fund. One was on eco-friendly mobile stove, which she has distributed to many poor women in her community free of cost, just to popularize the stove. And uh, she has also done an innovative technology, introduced an innovative technology to purify water into, with, into ground and then extract that for dry season use. And, you know, I, she's, she's a wonderful, um, you know, wonderful leader, a woman leader of her community. So, Sharian, can we see her story? Lipika Rani Boiragi. Our name is Lipika Rani Boiragi, Nirvahi Porichalo. Association for Social Development and Distress Welfare. Shabshma ekta icha je ami ei nari der bishesh kore amader ei dakope nari ra onek obohlito onek shubidha bonchito to ami chesta korlam ami chinta kortam je ami ei alakay theke ei gorib dukhi manusher pashe theke tader সেবা করার আমার ইচ্ছা ছিল এবং উনিশশো নিরানব্বই সাল থেকে শুরু মহিলাদের ওই ছোট ছোট গ্রুপ করে তাদেরকে ওই যারা ক্ষুদ্র ব্যবসায়ী ছিল দোকানদার ছিল দর্জি ছিল তাদেরকে লোন দিতাম দিয়ে তাদের ওই ব্যবসাটাকে স্টেবিলিশ করার চেষ্টা করতাম প্রায় দাকুপ উপজেলায় ষাট কিলোমিটার আমি রাস্তায় পাশে বনায়ন সামাজিক বনায়ন সোশ্যাল ফরেস্ট্রি সেক্টর প্রজেক্টের আওতায় এডিবির ফান্ডে এই কাজটা কিন্তু আমি করি বাঁশ কাঠ প্রিজার্ভেশন যেটা হচ্ছে ইনভারনমেন্টের জন্য খুবই সহায়ক হেলথের উপর কাজ করি বিনামূল্যে ওষুধ দেওয়া ভিজিডি হ্যান্ডিক্যাপসে এগুলো হলো জনপ্রশাসন মন্ত্রণালয়ের আর্থিক সহযোগিতা করেছি মাতৃত্ব ভাতাভোগী যারা মায়েরা ছিল তাদেরকে আমি প্রশিক্ষণ দিয়েছি সুনীতা রায় সে কিন্তু প্রতিবন্ধী তাকে কিভাবে সাপোর্ট দেবো আমি সমাজসেবা অধিদপ্তরে গিয়ে সমাজসেবা কর্মকর্তার সঙ্গে কথা বলে তাকে কিন্তু বিশ হাজার টাকার একটা মেশিন দেওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করেছি সব কিছু নারী আমার চিন্তা ভাবনা নারী 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 যে তাদেরকে কিভাবে আমি একটু আগাই নিব তাদেরকে আর্থিকভাবে কিভাবে একটু সচ্ছল করব কিভাবে তাদেরকে একটু সচেতন করব এটা আমার মূল উদ্দেশ্য মূল লক্ষ্য মেয়ে হিসেবে যে কোনো জায়গায় গেলে চ্যালেঞ্জ তো অবশ্যই আছে এবং সেটা মোকাবেলা করে আমাদেরকে এই পর্যন্ত আগাইতে হয়েছে প্রথম যখন আমি শুরু করি এই কাজটা সবাই ইনসাল্ট করত ইউনিভার্সিটিতে পাশ করে এসে লেখাপড়া শিখে এসে দেখো কি একটা কাজ করে তারপরেও কিন্তু আমি থেমে থাকি কাজ কিন্তু করেই গেছি এই কাজটা আমার পাইলট প্রজেক্ট এটাকে আমি আবার নতুন নামকরণ করেছি মোবাইল চুলা এই চুলাতে কাঠ কম লাগে এবং কম কাঠে তাপ বেশি এই চুলায় ধোঁয়া কম হয় তারপর কার্বন ডাই অক্সাইড যেটা ওইটা কিন্তু নির্গমন কম হয় এটা কিন্তু বন উজার হ্রাস পাবে বনকে বাঁচায় রাখতে পারি তাহলে কিন্তু আমাদের আমরা এই দুর্যোগ থেকে কিন্তু আমরা বাঁচতে পারবো মাটির নিচে বৃষ্টির পানি রিজার্ভ করে সেটা খরা মরশুমে ওইটাকে ওই পানি থেকে উত্তোলনের মাধ্যমে কালটিভেশন করা ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জের কারণে যে খরা হয় খরা মরশুমে ওই পানিটা দিয়ে আমরা কালটিভেশনের ব্যবস্থা করার জন্য ওই প্রকল্পটা সেটাও একটা আমার পাইলট প্রজেক্ট নিজস্ব অর্থায়নে সেটা করা হয়েছে 
যে কোনো মিছিল মিটিং সভা সেমিনার যেখানে যাই আমি মেয়েদেরকে খুব উদ্বুদ্ধ করি যে তোমরা আসো এগোয় আসো এখন কিন্তু অনেক পরিবর্তন আসছে মেয়েরা যে কোনো কাজে কিন্তু এগিয়ে আসছে যে কোনো এবং তার সিদ্ধান্তটাও কিন্তু এখন তার পরিবারেও দিতে পারছে সমাজেও দিতে পারছে রাষ্ট্রেও দিতে পারছে এটা বড় একটা অ্যাচিভমেন্ট যে আমি মনে করি এবং নারীরা কিন্তু অনেক সচেতন হয়ে গেছে তাদের অধিকার সম্পর্কে কিন্তু তারা বুঝতে শিখেছে that was lipika and uh, you know uh, the woman i have fallen in love with and uh, uh, thank you so much lipika for your wonderful uh, story and to share that story with us um now our next uh, women champion uh, is jahida jahan mo uh, and she is the sub editor as well as reporter of doinik dokhiner moshal from shatkira uh, she is associated with nagori kandolon monchu and many other such volunteer organizations at shatkira uh, and she has worked with uh, numerous reports regarding she has actually done uh, numerous reports um, on women and children especially uh, the impact of climate change on them so uh, sharin can we see uh, jahida's story আমি জাহিদা জাহান মো গ্রামের নাম তালতলা ডাকঘর বিনের কোথা থানা জেলা সাতক্ষীরা আমার পরিবারে আমার বাবা নাই বাবা সাড়ে তিন বছর হলো মারা গেছেন আম্মু আছেন আম্মু অসুস্থ বয়স হয়েছে আর আমরা চার বোন আমি সাতক্ষীরাতে অনেকগুলো স্বেচ্ছাসেবী সংগঠনের সাথে আছি নাগরিক আন্দোলন মঞ্চ যেটা যেটা গণমানুষের আন্দোলন যেটা বলা হয় মানে মানুষের অন্যায় অবিচার মানুষের অনিয়ম সেই নাগরিক আন্দোলন মঞ্চের আমি একমাত্র নারী সদস্য এবং সেখানে আমি শিক্ষা এবং গবেষণা বিষয়ক সম্পাদক হিসাবে আছি এবং আমি এখন বর্তমানে কাজ করছি দৈনিক দক্ষিণের মশালের সাথে সাব এডিটর হিসাবে আমাকে যদি বলা হতো যে তুমি কিনে রেকর্ড করবা আমি বললাম নারী এবং শিশু যদি বলে কেন বললাম নারী এবং শিশুরা ভারনাবে আমাদের সমাজে বিশেষ করে আমাদের সাতক্ষীরাতে এরকম বাংলাদেশের রিমোট একটা এলাকা তারা যে কতটা অবহেলিত কতটা তারা এর ভিতরে আছে সেটা আমি উপলব্ধি করতে পারি আমার আব্বু একজন সৎ মানুষ ছিলেন একজন নিরপেক্ষ সৎ মানুষ ছিলেন যিনি নিজের কথা কখনো ভাবতেন না অন্যের জন্য কাজ করে গেছেন বাবার থেকে আমার আজ কি পর্যন্ত আসা আর আমি বলবো যতটুকু অর্জন করেছি আমি নিজেই আমার আইডেন্টি আমাকে তৈরি করতে হবে আমাকে কেউ কখনো এটা দিবে না তৈরি করে আর আমার শুরুটা হয় আমি দু হাজার বারো সালে যখন এসএসসি পাস করি তখন সাতক্ষীরাতে টিআইবি মানে ট্রান্সপারেন্সি ইন্টারন্যাশনাল বাংলাদেশের সাতক্ষীরা সনাক বলে একটা সংগঠন ছিল ওটা থেকে আমার স্বেচ্ছাসেবী সংগঠনে আসা এবং আমার নেতৃত্বের যে মূল ভিতটা ওখান থেকে শুরু আস্তে আস্তে উন্নতি করতে করতে আমি ডেপুটি লিডার তারপর লিডার আমার আমি চাই সবসময় যে নারীদের নিয়ে কাজ করতে শিশুদের নিয়ে কাজ করতে তারা তাদের পরিপূর্ণ অধিকার ফিরে পাক সমাজে আমাদের সমাজ থেকে নারীদের যে অবজ্ঞা নারীদের প্রতি যে বৈষম্য সেটা সেটা দূর হোক পুরুষের যেমন মর অধিকার আছে পরিবারে পরিবারে কথার ক্ষেত্রে হোক কোনো সিদ্ধান্ত নেওয়ার ক্ষেত্রে নারীরাও যখন একজন নারী স্বাবলম্বী হবে সে কিন্তু অটোমেটিক্যালি তার সেই জায়গাটা সে তৈরি করতে পারলো আমাকে কিন্তু কেউ এখন বলে না যে আমার আব্বু নাম ধরে বলে না যে ওনার মেয়ে ওনার বোন আমাকে কিন্তু সবাই চেনে আমি মৌ মৌ নামে চিনে একটা পুরুষ যা পারে আমি কেন পারবো না আমরাই তো এই বিভেদ তৈরি করেছি সমাজে সেই বিভেদ যেন না হয় আমি চাই আমার মতো আরো আরো মেয়েরা এগিয়ে আসুক uh moor is actually uh, one of the journalists uh, from the grassroots level that uh, un women has worked last year um to just to um inspire them uh, to do reporting uh, on disasters focusing on women's issues and she has actually done some very good reports on amfan um uh, last year um 
now uh, I think our next uh, female champion is um, Ashrafun Nahar Mishti. She's the founder of the organization Women with Disabilities Development Foundation, WDDF, in Bangladesh, as well as a member of international organizations like Asia Pacific Women with Disabilities United and the Association for Women's Rights in Development. She won the uh, Her Abilities Award in 2018 for her dedicated work to give women with disabilities a voice and to create equal opportunities in education, employment, and policy making for them. So uh, over to you, uh, Mishti Appa. Ashrafun Nahar Mishti, you're there, yes. Over to you. Mishti, you are on mute. Sorry, sorry. This is uh, this is very nice program. I must say that uh, I am uh, sitting with my dream uh, girls and women like Kushiko Birappa, uh, Saima Appa, and others. And uh, it is very uh, very inspiring to me uh, that I have to do more hard work. Uh, basically, when I see the Jannatul Mawa, Alpuna Appa, Lipika uh, Appa, and others, so. Uh, thank you so much again, uh, UN Women, to invite me. Um, actually, I am um, a wheelchair user woman. I love to introduce myself as an activist. Um, here in Bangladesh, uh, we have so many challenges, uh, but we are very optimistic to go through uh, with uh, follow our leaders like Kushiko Birapa uh, and others. Uh, Samyapa is here also. I Met with her uh, before once that uh, disability um, rights and uh, the movement. So uh, I am uh, I got disability when I was only 14 years old. Uh, I was very young girl. I just uh, completed my uh, higher uh, secondary school. Then I uh, have had an accident and got a spinal cord injured. Uh, but I could not stop my study. Uh, due to uh, my parents, they were very passionate to uh, give the equal education to their girls and boys. I have another brother who has um, a disability, physical disability, and he completed masters from Jahangir University in economics. So I, I got my model uh, in my uh, very young uh, um, uh, level. So then I follow him. Uh, to go through with my disability. And after that, I uh, read more uh, news books, and then I find out Kushiko Birappa, Sharapa, Sultana Kamalappa, like this type of wonderful ladies who make me uh, dreamist to go through with my disability. I, when I uh, tried to get admission in Dhaka University, uh, then uh, Chitong University, Kushti University, in honors level, uh, all the universities just uh, ref refused me to admit in this university due to my disability and I have uh, womenhood. I'm women. Basically, they make the question, you are women. If you are uh, boys, uh, if you are boy, then we can consider you somehow because uh, your co- um, uh, uh, friends, they can help you. They can help you, but as a girl, a girl cannot help other girl. So that was the uh, main challenges to me, and I make uh, myself uh, very stronger than before. That I had to stand beside the girls who have disability and who do not get same opportunities which I have. So I talk with my father. My father then try to admit me in Indian uh, Moila College, then uh, Home, Home Economics Moila College, and he uh, did advocacy with the colleges to admit his daughter, but they also ignored me. Then finally I said, stop father, I want to go back my hometown, uh, Jashore, and I will study in Pashkors. Then I changed my um, 
and level i was science student so i go to commerce and i start my study very hardly and i completed my uh, mas uh, masters in accounting but there is also another story when i do um, pa do pash course that time my teacher said that why you come to commerce level you can go to arts because arts is more easier than commerce you were you were the you was the student of science so you cannot understand the um accounting management marketing etc etc so it was good if you go to uh, arts then i said that i will prove my ability in commerce first if i fail then i will go to arts so i i completed my uh, pass course with highest mark in accounting and then when i faced challenges when i admitted in masters in central university college mohammadpur mohammadpur uh, the principal uh, shriful islam sir said that uh, our college is not accessible so we are not willing to admit in you in um, in my college then i said that i have highest mark in accounting and i am uh, trying to doing my uh, career uh, in the best way how i can survive then he said that okay you cannot get admission you go out just so again i said uh, him that give me one week time and take some uh, class test and i will prove my ability finally uh, it was a challenge and i take this challenge principal sir said okay you will not admitted after prove yourself the next i take the challenges i start my class and i do first position in the six seven classes and then i got admission finally i finished my masters in accounting uh, with the first position in national university as that was the pass course so i, I do not guess the first class start us but 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 it was the first position in the second class status so i was happy but again i challenges faced challenges when i try to make me in a professional so i think that it will be best if i do not search many jobs for my life in government level or very uh, high level ngos like i ngos i started a job in a disabled people's organization and find out that there is so many challenges which i face in my personal life and as a girl i did not face any problem in my family but there is so many girls and women who have lots of problem in their family and who are abused by their family members so it's make me very uh, very uh, upset that how family members can abuse their girls how father can abuse their girls how uncle can abuse their a uh, child like this type of things make me very upset again when i uh, come to work in the policy making level i meet with uh, barrister sharapa and ask her that there is so many girls and women with disabilities who are um who already raped and they do not get justice from the court then sharapa said that okay come to to our network in women rights organization and after slowly i met with the wonderful leader khushi appa sultana kamal appa aisha appa and others who inspired me a lot how to do work so now as the climate change uh, things i am very much upset when we face lots of natural disaster in bangladesh like sido like aila like bulbul like amphan lastly happening when we were very much um bg to support the covid affected girls and many disabilities across the country when we face challenges that there is not equally distributed the resources to the all girls and many disabilities in the uh, village level that time we faced down front and i have i have a uh, really direct contact with the some dpos who are working in the shatkeri area and i find out the more vulnerable girls and women with disabilities who 
did not get any support from any organization, from NGOs, from government and others. That was very much uh, painful to me. Uh, me, not only me, but also other leaders. And we see that uh, the girls are raped when they are going to other door to seeking the relief. So I think that we had to go a uh, very strategic way and make our um, awareness to all the people in grassroots level, national level, district level, divisional level. As Saima Appa is here, I want to raise my voice that uh, Saima Appa, you know that the developed countries, you need to find out in accessibility. But in Bangladesh, I have to find out accessibility because we still we do not ride the bus, we do not ride the train. So if I want to work for the Shatkira or Kurigram or other remote areas, which is uh, very much disconnected from Dhaka, I need more money to go beside them because I cannot ride the bus, ride the train. So it is very much uh, difficulties for girls and women with disabilities to get support from the society people and stand beside others. So uh, please take care of this and raise also your voice that we need the accessible bus, train, uh, accessible uh, many institutions we ha have not uh, thinking for the how people with disabilities can come. And another thing that I am very much uh, interested to think for the um, girls, students with disabilities who are facing different type of challenges in the primary level, secondary level, college level, and also university level, which I also face. So um, in the primary level, newly building is uh, installed the ramp, but there is no wash facilities for girls. So uh, this is the one challenge. Another is the resources the teacher is not available in all the, uh, all the schools, colleges. So it is also difficult it's for girls and women with disabilities who are interested to uh, get education. So educated girls and women with disabilities is very much needed to build the leadership because we will be old once and then there will be, uh, there will be the gap in the leadership of women with disabilities. So we are thinking for that, how we can develop leadership among the girls and women with disabilities in our country. Thank you so Thank much. You. I think that um, this Thank is you all so things. much. Thank you so very much, Mishti, for sharing your stories and also raising some of the critical issues with regards to the um, people with disabilities. And I think uh, we all agree, you will, you will also agree, I'm sure, that the government of Bangladesh, uh, the present government of Bangladesh is uh, the most uh, sensitive um, government towards the cause of uh, disability. Uh, and thanks to Saima Wazid Hussain for that, uh, for spearheading uh, that uh, stream of work within the country. Uh, our next, um, <clears throat> Our next uh, climate uh, champion, woman champion uh, today is um, Forida Yasmin, the executive director of Nari Association for Revival and Initiative, Nari from Kurigram. Uh, so can we have her video please, um, Shari? Thank you. Thank you. আমার নাম হচ্ছে ফরিদা ইয়াসমিন আমি নারী অ্যাসোসিয়েট ফর রিভাইভাল এন্ড ইনিশিয়েটিভ সংক্ষেপে নারী নামে একটি প্রতিষ্ঠানে নির্বাহী পরিচালক হিসেবে কাজ করছি পাশাপাশি একজন উদ্যোক্তা হিসেবেও কাজ করছি আমার তিন বোন এক ভাই ছোটবেলা থেকে নারী পুরুষের যে বৈষম্যটা এটা আমা আমি বৈষম্যের শিকার হই তো ভাইকে বেশি প্রিভিলেজ দেওয়া হতো সবকিছুতে তাকে প্রায়োরিটি দেওয়া হতো আমাদের বোনদেরকে একটু লেস প্রায়োরিটি দেওয়া হতো সেখান থেকে মনে একটু ইচ্ছা ছিল যে কখনো যদি কোনো কাজ করার সুযোগ পাই তাহলে আমি নারীদের জন্যই কাজ করব নারীর ক্ষমতায়নের জন্য কাজ করব এবং বাবা মারা যাওয়ার পর থেকে আমি সংসারের হালটা ধরি উনিশশো সাল থেকেই 
দীর্ঘ দিন ধরে আমি বিভিন্ন এনজিও সেক্টরে আমি কাজ করতাম যেহেতু পড়াশোনার পাশাপাশি আমাকে কাজ করতে হতো তো কাজ করতে এসে আমি যখন এখানে এলাম এখানকার নারীদের আর্থ সামাজিক অবস্থা দেখে আমার মনে হলো যে এদের দীর্ঘস্থায়ী কোনো উন্নয়ন দরকার এবং তাদের একটা দীর্ঘস্থায়ী একটা কর্মসংস্থান দরকার হ্যাঁ সরকার এবং এনজিও বিভিন্ন ধরনের তাদের উন্নয়নের জন্য কাজ করছে তাদের সচেতনতা ডেভেলপ করছে তাদের ট্রেনিং দিচ্ছে কিন্তু এই জায়গাটাতে আসলে অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়নের জন্য যে দীর্ঘস্থায়ী কোনো কাজের কোনো সুযোগ এখানে নেই যে যে কোনো দুর্যোগে নারীরাই বেশি মানে ভোগান দিতে পড়ে তারাই বেশি ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত হয় বিশেষ করে নারী গর্ভবতী নারী বা কিশোরী বা প্রতিবন্ধী ব্যক্তি এরকম কিছু এবং যার রেজিলিয়েন্স ক্ষমতা কম এবং দরিদ্র নারী তারা বেশি ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত হয় তো আমরা নারী সংগঠনের মাধ্যমে বিভিন্ন দুর্যোগে তাদের জরুরি সহযোগিতার জন্য আমরা তাদের পাশে দাঁড়াই এবং প্রতি বছরই আমরা চেষ্টা করি নিজেদের তহবিল থেকে হলে কিছু না ছোট্ট আকারে হলেও আমরা চেষ্টা করি আর কখনো কখনো আমরা দাতা সংস্থার সহযোগিতা পাই কত বছর এবং চলতি বছরে আমরা বন্যা এবং কোভিডের জন্য আমরা ইউএনএফপিএ ইউনোমেন তাদের সহযোগিতা অ্যাকশন এডের মাধ্যমে আমরা বেশ কিছু প্রায় পাঁচশো ডিগনিটি কিট আমরা বিতরণ করেছি আমরা ওয়ার্কসফার্মের মাধ্যমে আমরা হাইজিন কিট এবং ফুড প্যাকেজ বিতরণ করেছি আমরা কিছু ব্যক্তি স্পন্সার যারা তাদের কাছ থেকে নিয়ে আমরা কিছু বিতরণ করেছি নারী যখন শুরু হয় তখন কিন্তু আমি একটা সেলাই মেশিন দিয়ে শুরু করি কিন্তু এখন অনেক নারী এখানে কাজ করে দুশো থেকে আড়াইশো নারী কাজ করে তো আমার স্বপ্ন এখানে প্রায় এক হাজার নারীর কর্মসংস্থান যেন আমি দেখে যেতে পারি আমি জীবিত অবস্থায় সেই লক্ষ্যকে সামনে রেখেই আমি বহুমুখী পাটপণ্য নিয়ে উৎপাদন নিয়ে এবং নারীদের কর্মসংস্থান নিয়ে আমি কাজ শুরু করি কারণ আমি যদি নারীর ক্ষমতার কথা চিন্তা করি তাহলে অবশ্যই অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়ন হচ্ছে মাস্ট এটা ছাড়া কোনো কিছু চিন্তা করা যায় না এবং এই নারীদের কর্মসংস্থানের জন্য আমরা কাজ করছি সেটা ফ্যাক্টরি বেজ এবং হোম বেজ এরকম কিছু নারীরা কাজ করে এবং তাদের মাধ্যমে তাদের অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়নের জন্য আমি চেষ্টা করছি আরও নতুন নতুন নারীদের যদি আমি কর্মসংস্থান সৃষ্টি করতে চাই তাহলে আমাকে আরও ট্রেনিংয়ের অ্যারেঞ্জ করতে হবে পাশাপাশি আমার ব্যাংকের লোন দরকার বা অর্থনৈতিক যে পুঁজি যেটা সেটা দরকার আমার আরও বেশি বায়ার দরকার তো এই হিসাবে অনেক কিছু আমি জানি অনেক কিছু আমার গ্যাপ আছে কিন্তু তারপরে আমার স্বপ্ন এবং আমার সাহস আছে যেটা নিয়ে আমি এগিয়ে যাওয়ার জন্য আমি চেষ্টা করছি একজন নারীর উন্নয়ন মানেই একটা একটি পরিবারের উন্নয়ন এবং একটি সমাজের বা দেশের উন্নয়ন থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ সাচ এ স্ট্রং ওয়ার্ড দ্য ডেভেলপমেন্ট অফ আমেন ইজ আ ডেভেলপমেন্ট অফ আ ফ্যামিলি অ্যান্ড আ নেশন such a strong and such a true um uh, utterance thank you so much um our next um uh, champion uh, today um will be masura parvin she's a unit leader of cyclone preparedness program volunteers from poddupukur shapkira uh, living in a disaster prone area um i mean she has been doing wonderful work Uh, in trying to save the lives of uh, the most vulnerable people including women and children uh, in her locality so we'll hear her story now sharian sharian please uh, her story thank you thank you amar naam masura parvin 11 number paddhopukuri union 8 number ward purbo pathakhali amra 5 bon 2 bhai amar pita mata nei দু হাজার নয় সালে পঁচিশে মে আয়লা হয়েছিল আয়লা হওয়ার পরে যখন জলোচ্ছ্বাস হয়েছিল আট ফুট পানি বৃদ্ধি হওয়ার কারণে আমাদের ভেড়িবাদগুলো সব ভেঙে যায় আমাদের তিনটা ঘর ওই ঘরটা কিন্তু ভেসে গিয়েছিল দেখি যে এই সমান পানি একদম আমি নিজে ওই আয়লার ভিতরে ওই পানির ভিতরে এই সমান পানিতে প্রথম কিন্তু আমার জীবনের দৃশ্য গরু বাসির বাসুর গবাদি পশু মানে যা কিছু ছিল সব তো মুড়ি পরিষ্কার কারণ ওর তো হঠাৎ ওই যে আয়লাটা হয়েছিল কিন্তু হঠাৎ তারপরে ওখান থেকে শিক্ষা নিলাম যে আমাদের একটা কিছু করতে হবে তখন দুই হাজার নয় সালে সিপিপি গঠন হয়েছে সেখান থেকে আমাদের নারী স্বেচ্ছাসেবক আমাদের রেড ক্রিস সেন্টার মাধ্যমে আমাদের ট্রেনিং করানো হতো আমি ফনি ঝড়ে কাজ করছি তারপর যখন বুলবুলি ঝড় হয়েছে চার নাম্বার সিগনালের পরপরই কিন্তু আসারা কেন্দ্রে চলে যায় চলে যাওয়ার পরে ওখানে যাই দেখি যে আলোর ব্যবস্থা আছে কি না পরিষ্কার পরিচ্ছন্ন আছে কি না 
আমি নিজে আর সেরা কেন্দ্রে ঝাড়ু দিছি আমরা এই টিম লিডাররা সমস্ত ঝর কিন্তু অলরেডি চলতেছে প্রচণ্ড পরিমাণে ঝর চলতেছে আমরা এই ঝড়ের মাধ্যমে আমার আমার যে ইউনিয়ন টিম লিডার আমার টিম লিডার আমরা আমাদের সিপিপির যে স্বেচ্ছাসেবক আছে পরে ওখান থেকে বেরিয়ে আমরা কিন্তু মাইকিং মাইকিং শুরু করেছি সমস্ত বাড়ি 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 যেই যেই পুরুষ মানুষ ওরা তো আর বাড়ির ভিতরে যাতে পারে না আমি ওরা রাস্তা দিয়ে দিয়ে মাইকিং করা আমি ওর ভিতর দিয়ে আমি বাড়ির ভিতরে ঢুকে পড়ি যেই বলি যে তোমরা আশ্রা কেন্দ্রে ওঠো কারণ গর্ভবতী যারা যে গর্ভবতী থাকে ওদের জন্য তো ঝুঁকি বেশি গর্ভবতী বন্দি প্রতিবন্দী শিশু বৃদ্ধা বৃদ্ধ এদের জন্য তো বেশিরভাগ ঝুঁকি আমি ওদের নিজে আমি ওদেরকে আশ্রা কেন্দ্রে নিয়ে যাই প্রতিবন্ধী আমি নিজে ঘাড়ে করে নিয়ে গেছি নারীদের জন্য কিন্তু দুইটা দুর্যোগ যেমন আমফান একটা দুর্যোগ আর তারপরে নারীদের জন্য আর একটা দুর্যোগ আছে ওখানে ওই পুরুষ পুরুষ নারী উভয় মিলে ওখানে বিশৃঙ্খলা ঘটে যে কারণে ওরা সাইক্লোন শেল্টারে যাতে চায় না কারণ নারীদের যে একটা আলাদা যে একটা পরিবেশ থাকবে নারীদের যে যেমন একটা দুগ্ দুদানকারী মা ওই যে পুরুষের সামনে সে তো বাচ্চার দুধ দিতে পারে না তা আমফান ঝরে আমার পুরুষ স্বেচ্ছাসেবক তুমি নারী আমাদের সাথে এসি প্রসারে তুমি থাকবা কেন তুমি যাও নারীদের ওইখানে যাও তো আমাদের সাথে তোমাদের তোমার থাকার দরকার নেই আমি বলেছি কি যে এ তুমি পুরুষ তুমি পারো আমি নারী আমি পারি না আমিও যেমন মানুষ তারাও তেমন মানুষ সোরম তো একই দিচ্ছি তা আমি বাড়ির বাড়িতে যাবো কেন আর তোমাদের সাথে আমি থাকতে পারবো না কেন খুব কষ্ট করে আমার এই স্থান অর্জন করতে হয়েছে মানুষ আমাকে বলে যে তোর ভয় বলতি তোর দিলে নেই আমার এই স্পিরিহার দিকে কিন্তু প্রতিপদ থেকে আমার সহযোগিতা করে ট্রেনিংয়ের মাধ্যমে আমরা যে কাজ করছি এ দেখে ওদের আগ্রহটা আরও কিন্তু বেশি যাচ্ছে যে ওরাও তো নারী ওরা যখন করছে আমরাও পারব না কেন ওদের সাথে সামিল হতে তো এই জন্য তো ওরা এগিয়ে আসছে পুরুষ যেটা করতে পারে নারীরাও সেটা করতে পারে একা আমি নিজে দশজন পুরুষের কাজ আমি নিজে একা করি আমাসুরা So strong words. Masura works, um, she alone does the work of 10 men. That actually is, 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 uh, is us, us women. We are really strong. Um, thank you so very much, Masura Parveen, for sharing your wonderful story. So inspirational. Um, uh, now I am pleased to invite uh, our next woman champion, Dr. Maureen Fordham, Professor of Gender and Disaster Resilience and Center Director, IRDR, Center for Gender and Disaster at University College London. She has been working in this field since 1988, and she's a founding member of Gender and Disaster Network, which was actually set up in 1997. Uh, and she has been uh, instrumental in designing the National Resilience Program, which is being currently implemented by the government of Bangladesh, uh, supported by UNDP, UNOPS, and UN, UN Women. Uh, and you know, she's a dear, dear friend and uh, well respected throughout the world as the gender and disaster expert. Uh, Maureen, over to you. Thank you so much, Dil Ruba, and um, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for the in invitation to join you. Uh, many women, and myself very much included, suffer from something called imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome means you doubt your own capabilities and when others praise your contributions, you do not feel that you, you are worthy. And in this meeting with so many inspiring women leaders, especially women leaders from the grassroots, I feel it very strongly <laughs> that Dilruba has twisted my arm, as we say, and uh, wants me to share something of my story and what I've learned from it. So uh, I, I could start with my personal challenge in this context uh, began in the 1990s when uh, I've really felt the need to make women visible, visible 
in the man-made world of disasters, where in many meetings, I might be the only woman. Also, um, it was very much my interest to use qualitative methods, research methods, because that enables you to really listen to uh, women's stories of disaster. And there was a real need to hear women's stories of disaster because you very, very rarely heard them. You heard about the male champions um, very often, and it's absolutely deserved to hear those stories, but they're not the only stories. So listening to women's stories of disaster and especially underrepresented groups of women, uh, maybe poorer or older or younger, uh, a range of um, voices that we didn't usually hear and accord them the respect they deserve. And I learned so much from those stories and some of them were uh, very emotional. I would often leave my research in the field um, crying because the stories were very moving and yet they were generally unheard. So in 1997, uh, with a group of like-minded people, uh, we started the Gender and Disaster Network, GDN, as uh, Dil Ruba mentioned. And um, I still coordinate this um, even though I keep trying to hand it on without much success so far, but I will not give up until um, uh, it carries on um, by new people. So GDN, this was the first of its kind in, in the world of disasters. Um, but of course, we began by standing on the shoulders of those who'd gone before in the gender and development sector. And we learned a lot from that um, that work. GDN, which for most of its life has been voluntary by all its members and carried out on top of their daily work, this gave me an opportunity to learn from and share from others who thought like me. This I couldn't find in most of my interactions with disaster management professionals and practitioners at the time, or even with my fellow academics. So gender concerns and the particular lived experiences of women were still seen as an add-on to come later, if at all, after the really important work was done. So we joined together and our combined vo voices were then able to gather together resources related to all aspects of gender and disaster. And from that evidence and membership base, we were then enabled to influence global disaster policy settings in a way that I simply couldn't do on my own. Since then, there's been a welcome growth of other groups doing similar things, but GDN remains as a platform for the exchange of these kinds of ideas from many different voices. And I still learn a lot from the members of GDN who post messages to the list. Later in 2018, I was lucky enough to be able to launch a gender and disaster research center at University College London, one of the leading global universities. And all this helped me to feel that what I thought was right and worth doing was actually shared. And it gave me a sense of self worth, although I still have doubts. I don't come from a wealthy background, I was the first in my family to go to university, and yet I left school at 15. I did all my higher education as a mature student when my children had gone to school. So if I can do it, then I feel other girls and women can, and I like to use any platform I can to encourage them and enable that kind of work. So what I've learned over the years we can all do something as individuals, but together we can do so much more. So joining a larger platform such as we have today means our voices are amplified, our influence is extended. But going forward, I think we need to ensure that we protect women's rights 
to their leadership roles and senior and paid positions, not just for women to be present and often voiceless in some kind of quota system, that we give full recognition of the leadership work that women already do, often quietly in the background, and the stories that we've heard in uh, this session, many of us would not have heard if, um, if Dilruba and um, uh, if at UN Women generally, if ICAD had not brought them, brought them together in this meeting. But also I think that such meetings should in the future have many more men attending to listen, not always to speak to such in, inspiring stories. And I think these are tasks for all of us if climate change adaptation is to work in a just, effective and gender responsive way. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you and to hear your stories this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maureen. You always, you, I, I, you always make such good um, points in your speech, no matter how long and how short it is. Um, and also sharing your personal story. Thank you so very much, very inspirational. Um, now, um, I think uh, we actually wanted to uh, continue this program for one and a half hours, which means um, we really don't have a lot of time, but still I want to have some time for open flow. Um, we had a few uh, questions. Um, no, I don't think we have questions as such that much, but uh, if there are any anybody uh, within in the um, participants, within the participants, anybody wants to uh, make any point, uh, we, I want to give uh, a little bit of time for, um, I mean, want to have an open floor uh, for discussions. So anybody, if, uh, if you have any question for any of the panelists, please just raise your hand um, or uh, if you can't for some reason, if you can't raise your hand, then you could probably just um, unmute, you, unmute yourself and ask the question because sometimes, okay, I already have a hand. Uh, Okay, can't see the hand. Oh, all right, yeah. Okay, I have a hand, Pankaj Kumar. Pankaj, they're from Christian Aid. Please unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself or do we need to unmute you? Um, Sharin? Yeah. yeah, can you hear me, Appa? Yes, Sorry. now I can hear you, yes. Okay, thank you, Appa, thank you very much. So it's a very interesting, and with COP26 coming, it's it really is very inspirational to talk about climate change and disasters. So my, uh, just for my own curiosity, because Christian Aid is very much interested into gender and climate change. So what should be our ask for COP26, specifically from women's and disasters point of view in relation to Bangladesh? And in terms of policies or in terms of, you know, asking donors or government, like what should we do over from my side? Thank you very much. Uh, there's one more question. Let us take a couple of questions and then we can come to the uh, panelists. Uh, Kushia, I have your hand up. Kushia, unmute yourself and ask your question or, or comment. I was just very wanted to thank you and I was very inspired hearing all the stories. My question is to all the warriors who are actually fighting. Um, I just wanted to ask them, you know, I know that they face, which they said, but they just skipped it over that they faced, uh, they didn't ha always have the support from the family. They didn't always have the support from the society. And for them to have done how, as much as that they have, they have done, what was the driving force that made them continue despite everything? I mean, the last story we heard about the, uh, you know, the, the volunteer for uh, the disaster. I know how yes. difficult because I've, we work in areas where disaster hits and I know how difficult it is. 
And for her, I was so impressed with her as with everybody else. So I just wanted to know if any one of them can respond. It doesn't have to be only one or two and all would take too much time. But what was that? What was the thing that kept them going? What is the thing that allowed them to just not listen to anybody and continue forging forward? That was my question. Thank you so much, Kushyapa. Okay. Um, I think uh, for the sake, I mean, um, for the sake of time, uh, maybe we could try to answer those two questions. And uh, if we have any more time, we can go get uh, a few more. But for those two questions, um, would Maureen or uh, Saima, any of you want to attend to that question? Saima, yeah. Sama, unmute yourself. Yes. 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 Uh, well, I'd really like to ask, answer the first question that was asked. I think that's a very important question. Um, how do we increase the participation? Because one of the things you pointed out right in the beginning is we do have fewer and fewer women who are participating. And the reason for that is there are real barriers. And as you he can hear from many of the stories that were shared, the barriers are, are about accessibility, the barriers are about finances, the barriers about social, um, um, you know, social customs or real family issues. So I think it is very important if we want to make, enable women to, to make change for women, we have to hear women, we have to listen to women. We cannot do that if we don't make it possible for women to participate, give them opportunities to speak. And they cannot participate if we don't make an extra effort to remove those very real barriers. So I think uh, for uh, you know, you and women yes, as a, um, a product of this discussion, it could be kind of putting together uh, collating all of the real challenges and finding many of these cases and giving opportunities to bring forth uh, some of this work that is there, the real issues with climate change that women are facing, many of the things that weren't said, but doing it in a way that removes these barriers for their participation that are very real and exist. So that would be an answer. Thank you so much. Um, and also, um, uh, Maureen, do you want to want to have anything to in response to this question, the first one? I I think it's um, what we've seen here and in, in the hearing and seeing the stories. This is really really important because uh, girls and women need role models. Otherwise, they cannot see themselves in these positions because. Normal society doesn't tend to show women and girls in those kind of positions. I would love to see UN women take all these stories, all these videos, and go on a mobile film show um, around uh, villages and towns around Bangladesh. So many, many more people can listen to and see these stories. Not Very my right. one. <laughs> not my one. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we need everybody to pitch in. We all are working in the same field. Um, okay, uh, for the next question, uh, can I request uh, the colleagues in Shatkira, because all the uh, panelists or the champions from Shatkira area have gathered in one place. So if I can request, uh, I know Jannat and uh, Masura, they probably are in one place, yeah? Um, yeah all of we are in one place because of internet uh, problem, yeah? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Bangladesh. So, so we, we, we do not miss the program, so that's why we are here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so if uh, if maybe um, Masura can uh, start the discussion. Masura, apna ke jete jiggesh korlen? খুশি আপা আপনি কি বুঝতে পেরেছেন উনি জানতে চেয়েছিলেন যে এত যে সমস্যা আপনারা ফেস করেছেন আপনারা সবাই খুশি আপা যেটা বলছিলেন কিন্তু এত সমস্যার পরেও এত বাধা বিপত্তি পেরিয়েও আপনারা কেন কি করে এতটা এগিয়ে এলেন কোনটা মানে কোন জিনিসটা আপনাদেরকে সাহস জুগিয়েছে কোন জিনিসটা আপনাদেরকে সামনের দিকে এগিয়ে যাবার প্রেরণা দিয়েছে সেই জিনিসটা উনি জানতে চাচ্ছিলেন খুশি আপা সো মাসুরা আপা আপনি যদি প্রথমে বলেন Masurapa? 
আমি আমার তো পদ্ম পুকুর আমার ইউনিয়নটা তো অনেক আমরা হচ্ছি যে আমাদের নদী ডাকি হিরি আমাদের ইউনিয়নটা বেষ্টিত যেমন আমরা দ্বীপির মধ্যে বাস করি বললেও ভুল হয় না যেমন আমাদের প্রতিনিয়ত আমাদের দুর্যোগের সাথে একটার পর একটা দুর্যোগের সাথে করতে হয় লড়াই করতে হয় একটা কাঠে না উঠতে উঠতে আর একটার সাথে আমাদের সংযুক্ত হতে হয় আমরা পরীক্ষিত যে আমি আসলে যে ওই শুটিং কিছু আমি কিন্তু বলতে পারিনি আমাদের যখন চার নম্বর যখনই সিগনাল দেয় আপু আমাদের যখন চার নম্বর সিগনাল দেওয়া হয় আমি আপনাকে একটু থামাই একটু থামাই সেটা হচ্ছে যে আপনাদের যে এটা আপনার কথাটা খুবই সত্যি যে সব কথা আপনি বলতে পারেননি কারণ আসলে তিন মিনিটে তো সব কথা বলা যায় না আপনাদের যে জীবন সংগ্রাম তার মানে ছিটে পোটাও আপনি হয়তো বলতে পারেননি কিন্তু আপনার যে যে প্রশ্নটা খুশিয়াপা করেছেন সেটা হচ্ছে যে এই যে আপনারা যে আপনার আপনার কথা বলছেন জিজ্ঞেস করেছেন আপনার এবং আপনার মতো যারা ওখানে বসে আছেন যে অনেক বাধা বিঘ্ন পেরিয়েও আপনারা এই যে আপনাদের কাজটা যে আপনি করে যাচ্ছেন এখনো এই কাজটা করবার জন্য এত বাধা বিপত্তি পেরিয়ে আসার জন্য আপনাদেরকে কোন জিনিসটা সেটা আপনাদের ব্যক্তিগত জীবনের হতে পারে আপনার নিজের মনোবল হতে পারে যেটাই হোক কোন জিনিসটা আপনাদেরকে এই পর্যন্ত এগিয়ে যেতে সাহায্য করেছে সেটা জানতে চেয়েছেন আপনাদের দুর্যোগের বিষয়টা আমাদের মনোবল আমাদের মনোবলের সাহায্যে কিন্তু আমরা এগিয়ে যাচ্ছি আমি যদি কিছু তাদের জন্য করতে পারি তারা অন্তত তো আমাকে তো অন্তত স্মরণ করবে যে না তারা আমার নিজেরাই কষ্ট স্মরণ দিয়ে আমাদেরকে দেখাচ্ছে যে ওরা পারলে আমরাও পারবো আমার পিছি পিছি তা আরো দশজন তো জাতি পারবে আমার মনোবলটা তো হচ্ছে এইটা এইরকম কেন আনসার খুশি আপার কোশ্চেন হ্যাঁ জানা প্লিজ আপা ইউ আর অলওয়েজ মাই লিডার এন্ড আই অ্যাম অলওয়েজ ইওর ফলোয়ার বিকজ ইন মাই লাইফ আই স ইউ অলওয়েজ ফ্লেক্সিবল ফর ইউথ এন্ড ইউথ উইমেন ইয়া সো আপা হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্ড উইজ আস disrespect discrimination always influence me that uh, when people told me that you cannot do this then i told them yes i can so <laughs> i think uh, always uh, those things happen with me because ninduk ke bashi ami shobar theke bhalo joto ninduk amake boleche toto amar mone hocche unno ekta shokti bhetore grow koreche ar ki thank you so much wonderful that's that's wonderful uh, to hear আমাদের নদীর সাইডে পাটাখালি আমার গ্রামের নাম হচ্ছে পূর্ব পাটাখালি নদীর সাইডে কি পরিমাণ তুফান আমি আমার টিম লিডারের সাথে আমার ইউনিয়ন টিম লিডার আমার নিজের টিম লিডার আমরা ওখানে কিন্তু অবস্থান করছিলাম আমার চেয়ারম্যান ওদের সাথে আমার চেয়ারম্যান নিজেও স্বীকার করছে যে না আসলে আমার যে সহকারী পরিচালক আমার চেয়ারম্যানের সাথে বলছিল যে আসলে না সে নারী হয়েও কিন্তু অনেক কাজ করে ও কিন্তু আমার অনেক জ্বালায় অনেক জ্বালা যদি কোন ঝড় আসতেছে তা বাঁচার জন্য আমাদের বাঁচার কোনো উপায় নেই ওই তো টেলিভাই করে আমাদের সবাই আমি যাই জার্মানে যাই বলি যে ভাই চার নম্বর সিগনাল উঠছে তো জরুরি মিটিং হবে আমাদের জরুরি জরুরি মিটিং এর পরে কিন্তু আমাদের এক পতাকা উঠানো হয় চার নম্বর সিগনাল যখন পাঁচ থেকে সাত নম্বর সিগনাল ওঠে আফা তখন কিন্তু দুই পতাকা উঠানো হয় যখন আট থেকে দশ নম্বর সিগনাল ওঠে তখন তিন পতাকা উঠানো হয় আমরা যেটা বললাম ওই তিন মিনিট করে আপনাদের এক একজনের ভিডিও দেখানো হয়েছে তিন মিনিট চার মিনিট এটাতে আপনাদের গল্পটা উঠে আসেনি যেটা সামথিং দ্যাট 
uh, more, um, sorry, I think I might um, need to translate. I think uh, with regards to the, um, that's an indomitable task, I guess, but I will try. I think the, the, the two answers that came in with regards to Kushiapa's uh, question of what actually drove these women to pursue and keep working despite all the hurdles um, in their society, in their community and in their families, the answer was that one answer was that it was their mental strength and their uh, indomitable spirit with regards and, and they desired strong desire to support their community people uh, and to support the people who uh, who are otherwise vulnerable and, and uh, at risk um, to disasters uh, that has driven her, especially Masura. And Jannat said that it's the criticism uh, that has always driven her. She thinks that each time the society or men uh, or society at large said that you as a woman or a girl, you can't do it. She thought that she will do it definitely. Um, okay, so I think we actually uh, don't have a lot of time in hand. So, uh, and I don't see any hands uh, raised. So I will close the open floor uh, now and um, I will I, now I, I just I just answer Kushi Kabir Appa's question because uh, in um, one minute Mishti Appa yes, yes, just, <laughs> just 30 seconds or 40 seconds uh, yes. actually uh, before coming here I had uh, three five phone calls from girls and women with disabilities uh, from different districts and they shared their sufferings always so the crimes, the happiness, the sadness, the struggles, that, that makes us um, just uh, moving forward. Actually, we can't stop ourselves to hear when that our sisters are not feeling good. That is the uh, basic uh, things happening, I think, all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Jeva. Definitely, that's, that actually, this uh, sympathy, this um, that we feel. Uh, yeah, I have a question. 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 I আমার মনে হয় যে সারা বাংলাদেশে অনেক ভাইস চেয়ারম্যানরাই এরকম সমস্যায় আছে তো আসলে আমরা চাচ্ছি যে এই সমস্যাগুলো সমাধান করতে পারলে হয়তো আমরা সমাজের জন্য আরো ভালো কাজ করতে পারবো বা আমাদেরকে দেখে আরো অনেকেই শিখতে পারবে নতুন প্রজন্ম যারা আসছে যারা ইন্ডিয়ান পরিষদে নতুন নতুন কমিশনার হচ্ছে মেম্বার হচ্ছে তারা হয়তো আমাদের দেখে একটা সুযোগ পাবে তো আমরা চাচ্ছিলাম যে এই আমরা যে সমস্যাগুলোর মধ্যে আছি হচ্ছে যে माननीय প্রধানমন্ত্রী নারীদের জন্য এত কিছু করতেছেন এত আইন আছে কিন্তু কিছু কিছু কারণেই হতো আমরা সেই সুযোগগুলো পাই না যেমন আমরা অনেক বরাদ্দ থেকে বঞ্চিত থাকি অনেক হচ্ছে যে রিলিফ থেকে বঞ্চিত থাকি বা আমরা যেমন অনেক হচ্ছে যে অনেকেরই আছে যে যেখানে আমাদের গেজেটে স্পষ্টভাবে লেখা আছে যে নারীদের জন্য মহিলা ভাইস চেয়ারম্যানের জন্য বাথরুম থাকতে হবে লেট্রিন থাকতে হবে এবং এই বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে যে এখনো অনেক বাংলাদেশে অনেক ভাইস চেয়ারম্যানদের এই ধরনের কোনো সুযোগ সুবিধা নাই যে কারণে অনেক এনজিও রা যারা আমাদের সঙ্গে কাজ করতে আসে অফিসে আসলে আমাদেরকে খোঁজে কিন্তু আমরা তো তাকে বসার জন্য একটা জায়গা দিতে পারি না একটা ভালো চেয়ার দিতে পারি না সেখানে একটা লাইট নাই বাথরুম নাই একজন নারী তো একটু সমস্যা তো হতেই পারে কিন্তু এনারা তো আমাদের বাথরুম ছাড়া চেয়ারম্যান কিংবা ইউনো চেয়ারম্যান বাথরুম থেকে ইউজ করতে পারে না সেক্ষেত্রে আসলে এই বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে আমাদের যে সমস্যাগুলো হয় আমরা আসলে কাজ থেকে মনে করি যে পিছায় আছি তো সুধারা আমরা একটু মনে করি যে আমাদের এই বিষয়গুলো যদি মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রী একটু আমাদের নারীদের মহিলা ভাইস চেয়ারম্যানদের নিয়ে একটু সরাসরি কথা বলতেন তাহলে হয়তো আমাদের জন্য সুবিধা হতো কেননা উনিশশো সাল থেকে যে আমরা নির্বাচিত হয়ে আসতেছি আজও অব্দি আমরা কিন্তু মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রীর সঙ্গে এখনো কোনো কথা ফেস টু ফেস বলতে পারিনি বা আপনাদের সঙ্গে যেভাবে বলছি এরকম বলার সুযোগ হয়নি তাই আপনাদের মাধ্যমে আমার আমার অন্তত পক্ষে দাবি আমরা যেন মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রীর সঙ্গে আপনাদের মতো করে একদম সরাসরি কথা বলতে পারি আমরা আমাদের মনের কথাগুলো বলতে পারি আমাদের সমস্যাগুলোর কথা বলতে পারি সব পাশাপাশি যে দুর্যোগ থেকে শুরু করে দুর্যোগ মানে শুধু যে বর্ষা বন্যা খরা তা তো নয় যেমন কোভিড নাইনটিন আছে আমরা সেখানেও অনেক সহযোগিতা করছি মানুষের জন্য তারপরে যেখানে 
আমাদের স্টিয়ারিং কমিটি সতেরোটা কমিটি আছে যার মাধ্যমে আমরা সমাজের অনেক কাজ করতে পারি দুর্যোগের সময়ে যেখানে লেটিন গুলো দিতে হয় বা যেখানে আমাদের মৎস্য আছে প্রাণী সম্পদ আছে এই জায়গাগুলো কিন্তু আমরা কমিটির স্টিয়ারিং কমিটির সভাপতি কিন্তু আমরা কাজ ঠিক মতো করতে পারি না যে কারণেই হয়তো আমরা এই সুবিধাগুলো নারীদের জন্য পৌঁছাইতে পারি না তো সেক্ষেত্রে সরকার what would be the champion's suggestion to rest of the women in bangladesh to overcome their challenges to contribute equally uh, can i request uh, kushiapa to uh, answer that question kushiapa oh thank you i'll try and be very brief uh, it will be i think this this session has been amazing and if you had asked me to speak a little later i would have said you know i wouldn't have said the same things which others have said and i would have probably said a bit more about myself but what i think what can be done is uh, events like this uh, you know it's not possible to get everybody to speak all the time so choose people who have been path breakers who have been leaders in their own community who've done exceptional and inspirational both work and bring them to a national forum and to a global forum to say that this is what women are doing you know we even with the 1 billion rising movement that i'm with we are talking about how the mother earth needs to be protected how we destroyed it and what do we as women need to do because we are the ones who suffer the most i think if we get stories from all across everywhere and bangladesh can be a leader in this we can take this up and showcase how women not only what the problems they face because the problems have been discussed enough but what you know what responses have they done to overcome this what are the solutions that they have thought out for themselves and there have been enough inspirational stories and i get my inspiration i mean i've been working for uh, almost over 45 almost 50 years now uh, in this field and i'm still inspired and i'm inspired by the work on the ground so i think if that we can do is a way which then can be meshed together and a clear cut uh, a clear cut uh, position comes out of it that this is the issue this is how things are being solved resolved locally so if local is you know think local uh, think uh, globally act locally so if we look at the think globally act locally slogan so here is what is being done locally to a global problem and we can you know somebody asked what we can do for the next cop and i think that uh, this is a way and this should be not just a one off session but this is something i know selimul haq has a lot of influence uh, where globally and uh, he could start bringing these issues forward it does make definitely it definitely thank you very much kushia but of course we have uh, selimul haq we have saima was it uh, at those levels where they can actually push uh, this issue of um, uh, gender mainstreaming uh, before i go to the chair uh, for the chair's remark uh, we have uh, dr atik rahman with us so i would request um, atik bhai to uh, give us a few of his um, reflections um atik bhai you are there can you hear me dilruba yes 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 atik bhai we can hear you hello hello atik bhai we can hear you no uh, i i'm muted i yes I, yes okay yeah okay again yeah um uh, uh, uh 
so as I said that I'm, I'm fascinated and humble. Each experience is new, wonderful and unique. It's very, very difficult. I think one of the things that you, me, Kushi, Salim, uh, uh, Salma, Saima, all of us put together, it's not one person, all of us put together, have to do is to make this into a manageable four-pager type of uh, story. The whole big thing goes on. But to say that these are the three things or five things that we have to do. COP26, very important, but COP comes, COP goes. We have to keep on doing it, making sure this strengthening goes on and these examples, these absolutely great heroines become examples for the younger generation to come. Our women are moving fast forward, there's no question. But one of the lessons I have learned through the process of last four consecutive floods and uh, the COVID together, uh, you know, particularly women have been confronted in multiple uh, uh, challenges at the same time. And we are expecting them to come out and do wonderful thing without resources. So it's that sort of collaboration and energy and putting together. And as somebody said, we are together far better than we are on our own. So that's the one. The second is some articulation of the policy level that we can definitely take further. And I'm happy to talk to you a bit further. It is not the best time uh, to, to, to do, the, do that. A few simple but succinct policy uh, actions that we can do. And the, uh, in my mind, there are four or five of those already there. So uh, that needs analysis, that needs doing. And I'm happy to work with you, anybody else uh, who are willing to do that. And there are other agencies, international as well, national. But this is the wealth of information we got there. And then we can build on it. Let me stop there without uh, interrupting the, the system and texting other people who are already late from the- uh, Thank you so much, I think, Bhai. Thank you so much, I think, Bhai, for uh, joining the session. Um, Kushiaba already was complaining a little while ago that when we talk about gender, it's all women talking. Uh, that has to be changed. Uh, at the beginning, Selim Bhai Kushi talked- and I have been doing that for 40 years now, 50 years now. And, and now you have uh, some words um, uh, to put forward. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Abhin Bhai. So now uh, we come uh, to the end of the event. And uh, so now it's time for the chair's remark. And we are really, really happy uh, to have Ms. Saima Wazid Hussain uh, as the chair of the event. And she's um, the thematic ambassador of Climate Vulnerable Forum and the chairperson of Shuchona Foundation a not-for-profit advocacy research and capacity building organization based in Dhaka. Uh, she's a graduate from Barry University in Florida, and she is an expert on neurodevelopmental disorders and mental health, and is a US certified school psychologist. And she's an accomplished speaker who has raised international awareness and influenced policies and programs on disability, climate change, and disaster risk reduction. She was instrumental in the adoption of UN resolution titled Addressing the Socioeconomic Needs of Individuals, Families, and Societies Affected by Autism, Spectrum Disorders, Developmental Disorders, and Associated Disabilities in 2012. Saima Wazid was designated as the World Health Organization Champion for Autism in April 2017. Uh, Saima Wazid Hussain, the daughter of the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, is also a chairperson of the National Advisory Committee on Neurodevelopmental Disorders and Autism. So over to you, Saima, for uh, the chair's remark. Thank you so much. Uh, all, all of that that you've said, I'm, I'm experiencing what Maureen pointed out, the imposter syndrome. I think I've always sort of had that. and. Um, and it's, I'm glad to hear that it's very, very common. Um, today's uh, event, thank you so much for inviting me and asking me to, to be there. I don't often like to come 
to events where I'm just chairing. I like to talk about where I can give a professional input, but this is an opportunity to learn and truly I'm glad I did because it, the stories are so inspirational. Hearing about all the challenges these women have faced and taking on issues that really impacted them and their dreams to make a difference. And that I think in many ways that is what keeps many of us women going and working in an area that we are um, inspired by or feel the, cha the challenges exist because we want to make uh, a, a difference in our life, difference in the lives of the, in our community and inspire um, others. And it's amazing to see how strong our, our women are, our Bengali women are. And, you know, and it, congratulations to each and every one of them for doing um, you know, taking on the challenge of um, that they have faced in their life and turning those challenges, turning those negative experiences, um, finding that mental strength to do something that changes not just for their life, but those around them. And most, you know, it was very inspiring to hear the, the little niece say, I want to be just like my aunt to do something in, in, in the world. And that's truly what I think um, is what we need to do is inspire our younger generation, inspire the children, give them opportunities to learn, learn from real lived experiences, but also learn actual tools and techniques because the fire is there. You know, many of the girls have that fire. They need something to push them forward, to go beyond their own fears, their own, um, um, you know, social barriers to break through and do something that gives them more and more strength and continues to face that. I hope, you know, Bangladesh, I can tell you that you have to say 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 that you have to so, you know, no matter which stage you are in life, no matter which social status you have, or which country you live in, you face those barriers as women. You face the social barriers, you face those in, internal um, barriers. And so it's very, very inspiring to hear about the, the women uh, and what they're doing, the social changes that they're um, trying to bring about because that is what is going to get our country to be the, a country that uh, we can all be proud of. Um, to, you know, I've been asked to give a little bit about uh, my story and uh, in my you know, transition into kind of becoming the, the spokesperson for the um, uh, thematic ambassador for vulnerabilities. Um, for the CVF forum. And um, in many ways, the reason I accepted this um, challenge, so to speak, because I'm not a specialist who works in um, climate change. I'm passionate about it, but I, I'm not very knowledgeable. But the reason I did um, is in many ways a journey in and of itself. Um, it, but it was because of an opportunity to speak about um, the cause, the issues that are faced by people with disabilities, the issues of uh, women face, the issues that vulnerable groups that are marginalized continue to face no matter what is being done. Um, professionally, I had always worked as, uh, you know, I, I married very early. Uh, I uh, had an education. I was very fortunate to um, be um, you know, have an education in the U.S. and marry into a, a wealthy family, but in many ways, it was a very traditional family. And so when women talk about all the challenges that they faced, we um, are, you know, we're encouraged to study, but we're not always encouraged to do something um, for, with our education. And to work as a school psychologist um, and uh, work in very impoverished schools for me in the US was in a way an opportunity to give back to very vulnerable groups. Even if I couldn't work in my country, I, uh, it was something that uh, I, um, I 
felt made a difference in those very, you know, very impoverished inner city populations to help families. And every opportunity, uh, every challenge that I was uh, facing at the time are things that I have used even now to go forward, to not take no for an answer, to try to find a uh, way to help a family that doesn't have that much, to, have, to help a child with a disability in living in poverty, even uh, in, in this country that we think that has so much. So, uh, uh, you know, my journey sort of evolved uh, through that into having to move to another country because of the political um, situation that was in Bangladesh. And then losing uh, my job, losing my uh, colleagues, losing my network of support, moving to Canada um, and trying to find myself uh, again as well as uh, raise my you know, four children. I, what drove me into working with autism or going out of my very uh, comfort zone, working through my fears of public speaking. Um, I used to be extremely, it's, uh, that's why I find it very funny when people talk about I'm, a, I'm really good at public speaking. It was my biggest fear. I think um, the first time uh, my mother was elected prime minister, a journalist had sort of come and put a mic in front of me, say a few words, how are you feeling? And I was absolutely terrified, unable to say a single word, but that was me. Every opportunity that I had during my education to not do a presentation, I took it. <laughs> I, I did the extra written work so that I didn't have to do a presentation because I was terrified of speaking. It isn't my favorite thing to do. Um, so, but uh, when I was sort of in this time in my life where I had um, having my fourth child, being in a very traditional family that would weren't always very happy about me being career minded and wanting to work, who wanted me to be more successful as a homemaker, as, um, as a wife, as a caretaker, and which I wasn't very, very did not even feel very competent about. You know, being the daughter of Sheikh Hasina, being the daughter of somebody who's so inspirational and having um, a second mother, my aunt, my color, who pushed me to keep going at it, didn't stop, you know, helped me continue my path. But, um, you know, there wasn't as much opposition, but there's always disapproval. And we as girls always want further approval and appreciation to, so con, to continue despite that unspoken approval or the you know, unspoken disapprovals or the, um, the negativity or to even to be able to say, oh, you know, what is it that you're really doing? Or is it really making a difference? Or shouldn't you be doing something else? Or are you not getting paid to do this or working without pay? And which is what I've been essentially doing for the last 10 years. So to devalue what you do is something that I understand very well. And we all face because we choose to do something more that is or choose to do something different. Um, but my, a lot of uh, my uh, jump into autism advocacy in Bangladesh happened because of a very close friend of my, my mother's. We all know her as uh, Baby Modud. She was a very famous journalist. And she inspired, and being a mother of a child with a disability, she um, pushed me to write an article. And uh, being, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the response that came with just writing one article on autism, that was just my own um, feeling, um, she, which she translated in, in Bangla for me. And uh, there was such an overwhelming response that I met with many of the mothers uh, and organizations that were there at the time with autism which was all her doing, you know, her pushing it. And I remember there's a really good photograph of me at that event, but let me tell you, I didn't have much to say because I was so overcome with um, the emotional, the stories, the sad, sad incidents that the parents had experienced, the challenges that existed in the system. And um, especially particularly of this mother who had lost her 13 year old daughter to what was probably just a stomach ailment because she had autism because, daughters, uh, because the doctors didn't know how to treat somebody with autism. To hear that kind of a story was what uh, you know, pushed me 
and made me realize that more has to be done. And of course, uh, given that uh, there were opportunities at the UN, they were celebrating World Autism Awareness Day. It was something that had uh, sort of come as, um, uh, as an international agenda, being able to join that. Again, it wasn't about just following the path that was said, using my social status or political status to just be a speaker. I was always driven to do more, to see what is it that is going to make a difference to families uh, in my country, to families living in poverty, live, families living elsewhere in other countries like Bangladesh, where there aren't these the same uh, you know, legal mandates or the uh, social systems or the education system or the accessibility how do you go about making this change? And the first opportunity came with not just celebrating autism as a uh, day, but addressing it as part of the United Nations social and economic uh, agenda. So therefore, there was another resolution. And um, I, can't, I can't even, it'll take a long time to tell, tell you about who I did not go and meet and talk to and go out of my comfort zone to go and talk to strangers and say, yes, I am so you know, whatever introduction that was needed to have an opportunity to talk about, we, this is what autism is and we need to do something and we have a resolution. So, uh, you know, you set goals for yourself. So the first goal was getting the UN uh, resolution on autism and my, Ultimate goal was thinking we'd have a resolution in the World Health Organization. And of course, we're very lucky that both um, uh, the autism resolution and the mental health resolution was something that passed. Um, I'm you know, very proud to say that we worked with a network of other uh, uh, advocates, of other institutions, other organizations, and many government officers, administrators, everybody really, uh, followed up, did their little part. It didn't take, you know, it wasn't um, one person, it was a collective experience and working as a network, each advocated to their country. And because we had the same message over and over and over again, things changed and we were able to get this wonderful WHO resolutions. We actually have two, one in, in our region, which, which was first, and then that was in the um, larger, all the member countries of the World Health Organization. And at that time, it was almost like, I, I, I've achieved my goal, I've done what I want to do. And there was really nothing um, uh, else that, you know, when you reach your goal, you think that's the most difficult thing you will uh, be able to do. What do you do after that? But um, you know, families in Bangladesh needed me and I couldn't stop. So sometimes you have the goal and dream that you think you need to achieve. And then you see that in the ground, the changes haven't happened and you have to continue. And so therefore I formed uh, Shuchana Foundation. We started off with volunteers. We started off with borrowed space, uh, uh, you know, uh, and of course, uh, given past history of people, you know, we've been worried about how it would be perceived or how I would do fundraising or I can't do fundraising and how I would hire people and were they really truly uh, interested in working in this area. So there were many, many different kinds of challenges, but at the same time, many opportunities because um, given my social and political status, I can at least get my foot in the door and I can be heard, you know. Uh, and, and not using that opportunity would be a crime. So that is what at this point has always driven me. Uh, because if I, if I have a voice, if I can help give voice to many of these families, many of these women, many children uh, who don't have the same opportunities I have, then I haven't done what my purpose in my life would be. And so that is what I continue um, to do and if, you know, continue to learn and through our small organization of very young people, very senior um, advisors who have volunteered, very experienced, wonderful people who uh, work with me and have volunteered a tremendous time and the very, uh, you know, and our uh, colleagues who are, you know, many fresh graduates, many very young who are uh, you know, I know many of them are, are part of this uh, listening to that. They 
are learning every day. They are in, they inspire me because as they're learning, they are also teaching me. And uh, you know, I it's a constant um, uh, challenge and an inspiration because um, <laughs> I, I I see a problem and I want to dive in and I want to have a, figure out a solution. So they are constantly working and following up and learning as they go. There is no opportunity in Chuchana to say, okay, I've learned this, I've done this, I'm very good at it and I keep doing its work as usual. It doesn't happen that way. And we face the real challenge of not just creating resources uh, to help parents, to help children, to help teachers, to help doctors, but we also face like the, the real social stigma and misunderstanding about what it is that persons with disabilities, persons with mental health conditions, persons with autism can do. Because my true belief is that regardless of what disability you have, regardless of what challenge you have, you are more than that. There is The barrier exists in society. The barrier doesn't exist so much with the person. That, and that if you give them that opportunity, give them the opportunity to learn, give them the opportunity to be employed, give them make it accessible for them, they will be able to reach their full potential in their own way. We as a society have to change, but we constantly force people with different conditions and say they don't have something. It isn't about them not having something. It's about that we're not giving them the support to reach the potential. And so, um, you know, even with the climate uh, forum and with forums like this, it is uh, truly, um, you know, uh, in, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, honored to be here to share a quick story of my own journey, but to learn and to be more inspired. And I hope that uh, I can continue to give voice um, and find some different ways to take the agenda forward to uh, help women, mm, girls, persons with disabilities, persons with different challenges reach, truly reach their potential and reach their dreams in any way that I can. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so very much, uh, Saima. That's uh, truly inspirational. I mean, the way you have said that, you know, you. Uh, you you face the same very same kind of social uh, barriers. Uh, let's put it that way. That uh, any one of the champions uh, here today, and uh, and still and and the other thing is that um, in in addition to these barriers, you also had all the reasons not to overcome those barriers because you you have a very comfortable life and. Uh, yeah, but while uh, the champions are struggling, you didn't necessarily had um, any uh, socioeconomic struggle uh, for that matter, but still you decided and you have uh, fought for your, um, uh, for, the, for the causes which is close to your heart and, and you are here where you are. So uh, uh, congratulations to you. And we surely would um, like to um, be by your side uh, and uh, help you push through the agenda of gender mainstreaming into climate change actions, all of us here and definitely you and women. Thank you so very much, Sama. So um, we have come to the end of today's event and I would like to express my heartiest gratitude to the team of ECAD and UN Women whose relentless work over the last few weeks have resulted in fruition of such a wonderful event. Um, a special thanks to Dr. Salimul Haq for uh, all out support to the event, which reassures his unflinching support uh, to the cause of women leadership and gender mainstreaming in climate change policies and actions um, with support from expert like expert leaders like uh, Dr. Hawk, uh, Saima Wazid Hussain, uh, at international level and relentless works in gender responsive climate actions of women leaders at national and local level. Um, I'm sure in next four years, by the end of UNFCCC's five-year enhanced Lima work program um, uh, on gender and its gender action plan, we will have significant advancement 
in gender integration into climate change policies and actions. A huge thanks to our panelists, uh, the women champions, climate champions, uh, Kushiapa, Maureen, uh, and all my um, friends and colleagues at uh, Kurigram and Shatkira. Thank you very, very much. Have a good night and uh, rest of the day uh, to friends outside Bangladesh. Thank you. <laughs>